afternoon, Gary. Good Hi. to see you. How are you? It's been a little while since we last spoke to you because of the international break. Clearly, there's been a lot happening in the, the background with regards to the, the takeover. Can you bring us any updates as to what may have been happening and what you've been told? Um, no, I mean, I'm uh, Richard Hughes and Neil Blake I'm, I'm in regular contact with and they, they keep me up to date on, on, on what I need to know and, and, and I'm obviously happy with, with that and where everything is. Um, but in, in terms of updates, no, 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 nothing at all from me. Have you been told that it's getting closer? No, I think, I mean, I'm not going to um, share any private internal conversations that we have. I think the, just the important thing is that I'm being kept up to date. I know exactly where things are and um, I'm happy with, with my situation, which is still being tasked to, to take the team until, until further notice, which I'm delighted to do. And presumably this takeover happening in the background is a good thing because it, it keeps everything very stable and settled for the, the first team and you taking things week by week. Yeah, I'm, 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 I mean, I don't think the takeover or wh whatever's going on in the background has any impact on myself or, or the, the playing squad or how we prepare or how we feel. I think there, um, it's made no difference to, to how I've felt towards this game the other games, it's just we're, we're getting ready for another game. The boys are extremely professional, ready to go. Uh, anything outside of our dressing room won't, definitely won't affect affect us either way. We're just going to be relentless in how we prepare. And uh, such a big game coming again Saturday that it's just pure focus on can we can we get a positive result here against Brentford at the weekend. The fact that you're unbeaten and you've been in the hot seat for now a few weeks. Does it make you want the job that little bit more because you're starting to, to get a feel for things and starting to put your identity on the team? No, my, my feeling towards it hasn't changed from when I from when I first started. I, I wanted to be a football manager a long a long time ago. Uh, that's still the case. Um, I'm feel honoured and delighted that I've had the opportunity so far to do it for the for the three games and however many weeks it's been. Um, and I'm delighted to to take it in, until further notice. I think. Saturday to start with is a is a huge game. I'm really excited about it. Really excited about where the boys are. Um, opportunity to come back in front of our home fans, which has been a while with the Brighton game being cancelled. And obviously the first game I took was was Wolves, and there wasn't a lot of time to get ready for that one. So yeah, just just really excited. A few day, only a couple of days away now. Prep and excitement ramps up with a with a home game coming that we, we're going to be competitive in. With the fact this being an international break, is this the first time, as you've touched upon there, that you've actually been able to just take stock and spend a bit of time on the training pitch and actually work with the players because you sort of were chucked in at the deep end and you had to just prepare for games and then deadline day and then another game. Have you been able to use this time wisely? Yeah, I mean we've we've done some real good work since since I've since I've sort of taken the reins, so to speak. I think not only the last two weeks, obviously the last two weeks are tricky because there's there's loads you want to do, but a lot of the boys are away in international uh, teams, so um, some of the work is um, you can't get done until when, when they arrive back. So, um, But we've got loads of good stuff done, loads of good stuff, not only the last two weeks. Obviously, the Brighton game was called off, so we had a little a little spell there where we could do some work. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with, with where the squad are. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, already looking really looking forward to it. And finally for me, Brentford, the weekend, Ivan Tony got called up to the England squad. There was a lot of talk about him and the hat trick he scored a couple of weeks ago, and the, the, the type of player he is and the journey he's been on. Are you surprised that you didn't see him play for England? And the fact that he didn't get those minutes does that make him perhaps a little bit more determined and hungry to prove that he should have got minutes by having a good game this weekend? Yeah, I don't, I don't really have any uh, sort of feeling around whether I was surprised, not surprised that he didn't play. I mean. Obviously, Gareth will, will do what he feels best for that for that group, and um, I'm not sure how it affects Ivan Tony and his prep for the for the for our game. I think he, I'm guessing as all all footballers are, they'll be determined to go and put on another good performance um, and show everyone what what you're about. Um, but yeah, I think he's he's obviously a, he's had a, he's had a fantastic start to this season. Scored some real good goals. Was a big part of what they did last season as well. So he's he's a good player for sure. He's um, not too many number nines like him around anymore either. So not something that centre backs come up against as often as they as they used to. So um, will be a test. Of, will be a test, of course, for for us. But they, they they carry a lot of threats. To be fair, Brentford they're a good side. Not just not just Ivan Tony. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll need to be ready. 
Gary, is um, is Ivan Tony? Is it worth Dom Solanke looking at him as someone who who scored thirty goals in the Championship one season and then reached double figures in the Premier League the next season? Is there is there you know is it worth him looking at that as an example? No, I, th- I think they're very different. I think Dom is extremely highly driven already. Um, is a real good professional. Works hard at his own game. Work knows his strengths. Works hard on on stuff that he needs to improve. Um, is massive for this group. So I understand why people will talk about them together as in a comparison, but they're, they're, they're very, very different. And I mean, Dom's a talented young English centre forward. So should you aspire to, to one day being in and around the England squad? Yeah, of course, I think all all young, talented English footballers do. Um, and, and Dom will probably be no different. Um, but yeah, he's. I mean, I'm delighted to have Dom as part of our group. He's massive for us. You mentioned Ivan Tony's nothing like their only threat. Have you done any extra work on set pieces in this break? Because they see those as a as a big weapon, Brentford, don't they? Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to discuss what we what we've worked on, but Brent, Brentford are a real threat from set plays. Um, they are. They're a physical side. They play forward a lot. Um, they, they, yeah, they, they look to gain set plays. They, they they look like they do a lot of work on them, and what they're well organised. So, of course, as with every game, I look at every team's threats and what and what how they how I feel like they'll they'll look to to hurt us and and what we can do about it you said you wanted to be a manager and you've done coaching badges and everything I've never done so I've no idea but do those badges have they prepared you for every element that you've come up against so far like like an international break for example I know you can put on a session and things but all these elements that you're being faced with are you drawing on coaching badge experience just experience of being in dressing rooms as a player what how 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 do you approach it all yes it's it's a good question i think the coaching badges are great they give you um some real good knowledge and and also you get to be around groups of people that are, have similar goals and and have real good knowledge as well so you spend some real good time with people that are all trying to to get to a similar place um but as in the experiences of being in a Premier League changing room as a as a leader of a group. I mean, yeah, more on more on my playing career to be honest, and experiences that I that I had as a as a captain or as a senior player in a group, or even as a young player in a group, and and how they sometimes need help. So, I mean, yeah, I've been in and around first team football since I was sixteen. So, loads of experiences that I can draw on, and um, yeah, so, so so probably more the real life experiences of being in and around it. And have you had any sort of flashbacks yet where you've had a particular situation with a player or something and you've thought, oh, I'm not going to deal with it like the manager dealt when I was in that position as a player or or the other way, positive way sort of thing? Yeah, I don't consciously feel that way about anything, but I'm sure my experiences in the past will shape how I I deal with things. Yeah, definitely, I think. always looking at every situation I can, trying to stay on top of stuff, whether that be tactics, whether that be the, the mentality of the group. Um, so yeah, just try, trying to be the best I can be for this group of players is, is just solely important. From the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed is, how can I help this group? And how, what, what sort of shape is, is the squad in? Have you had any players returning from injury over this time? I think that, yeah, the boys that are on their way back are doing really well. Um, ben Pearson and Joe Rothwell are getting real close. Um, Ryan Fredericks has made big improvements. Uh, Lloyd Kelly won't be available yet. Um, trying to think who else we had for the Newcastle one. That's probably a, a pretty much full update on, on where we are, but I'm delighted with, with where the group are as a whole. Yeah, obviously Lloyd Kelly being missing is a, is a massive blow. Is huge for us. Um, but as, as you saw at Newcastle, the boys that, that come in and the back line and even the the team spirit and the work in front of that back line was was, was massive for us. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking to, to make sure we're solid and resolute again. And how's he reacting as captain to be there not being involved on match days? Is he still taking a, an active role in, in the dressing room in you know, how, how, everything you'd expect from a captain is he sort of stepping up? He's a great lad, Lloyd. I couldn't ask any more of him whether he's whether he's injured, whether he's playing. He's yeah. Obviously, I, I played with him for a short spell at Bristol City and knew he was going to be be a, a fantastic player. So yeah, and he's as I already said, he's he's a real good guy. So yeah, he's he'll, he'll always want to be around it, always want to help the boys. Um, 
So yeah, really, I'd rather him be on the grass, but pleased that he's, he's helping out when he's not. Afternoon, Gary. Did everybody come back from international duty fighting yeah, fit? Yeah, we're all good. Really pleased with where the group are. Um, excited for the game. Um, excited to see what uh, the boys can produce again on Saturday in front of our in front of our own fans. You covered the injuries there with with Paul. Can I just ask you about last week's Premier League Cup game? I know that you were uh, you were watching that. What, what did you make of that? No, it was a good game. Yeah, it was a good game. Obviously, Sean Cooper did well to to get the team back in it from from one nil down. Um, some good performances. Um, it's good from our point of view as well to get a couple of the lads some minutes. Um, so yeah, and no, I, I enjoyed it. And obviously, the boys winning was was big for them. Just going back to the the captaincy, Gary. You captained virtually everybody you played for, and your and the um, England under twenty ones as well. How important a role do you see it on the pitch, or is it everyone's a captain if you like? I mean, there is a there is an importance to it, definitely. Um, I think everyone does it in their own way, um, but also you're, you're right. The group, the group, everyone needs to play their part in, make, in making sure the group's in the right place. So, although the captain sort of sets that off for you, we're, we're fortunate here that the lads all they all drive each other really well. Whether that be in training, whether that be in game, whether we have to respond to difficult moments, whether we need to manage ourselves in good moments, they're they're really good at that as a, as a group. So. Um, yeah, so the, the captaincy is important, but the, I mean, the, the mentality and intensity of the group is the, is the key driver, really.